one of my loyal patreon supporters wanted to know how to make clothing articles which have these wrinkles right here the best part is that we have to keep this shit low poly because this is supposed to be usable for game so i'm going to show you how i modeled this hat right here and i'm also going to show you how to create these very detailed wrinkles while keeping your object low poly we've got a lot to talk about so we're going to move quickly if this tutorial is too fast for you and if you want to learn more about the techniques that you're going to see me use in this video i put everything that i ever use in these videos into my blender ebook check it out the link is below and if you need some more help then join my discord community you can always talk to the people in there first of all we have to make the basic rough shape of our hat and we're first gonna do this in low poly and later we're gonna apply a subdivision surface modifier so we get a little bit more geometry and it's going to look a little bit more detailed that way the reason we're gonna do it in low poly first is because it's easier to control the shape when it's low poly when you got a whole lot of polygons it's very difficult to make major changes to the shape of an object you got to use proportional editing it becomes pretty destructive at that point so we're gonna select the default cube and delete it with shift a we're going to add a circle let's go to this add circle menu and let's go with something like 12 vertices now we have to enter edit mode and this is very important you're gonna press r to rotate z to rotate around the z-axis and you're gonna rotate this by 45 degrees now the edges on the sides here are perpendicular to the axes and we no longer have a vertex here but we have an edge before we would have a vertex and if we rotate this by 45 degrees it's just a little bit better for our workflow I know this because I tried creating this before, so the geometry is placed better if we make this rotation. Now press E to extrude, Z to extrude along the Z axis. You're gonna lift it up to around here somewhere. We're gonna scale this down, and from side view, we're going to change the shape at the bottom of this hat. So with Alt right click, we're gonna select the bottom edge loop, rotate that with R a little bit like this. We can even move it with G to bring it to the front a little bit more like this. And now we're gonna select all the geometry in the back and rotate it like this. Then we're gonna deselect the geometry in the front and rotate this a little bit more. I'm just trying to get this little curve up here in the front. And this is where you're gonna have that thing which covers your eyes to protect you from the sunlight what the fuck do you call this once we made this little curve in the front here we're gonna add another loop cut here with control r we'll place it around here somewhere this is the band that goes around your head and then if you want to you can take some geometry in the front here and slide it up with double g you can make this part in the front here thicker if you want to by doing that and now with control r we'll add another loop cut over here and then in face select mode with alt right click we'll select this face loop at the bottom and let's use alt s to inflate that a little bit and that way we're gonna get this little band. Then select the top with Alt right click, extrude right click and scale it inwards a little bit. We can lift it up on the Z axis just to get a slightly better shape. Then you can extrude it inwards one more time. And we're gonna go up here to face, grid fill, that's going to give us some cleaner geometry at the top. You can adjust the offset down here in this little menu to make it position a little bit better. Now let's take some edges from the front here. I'm selecting five edges in total. I'm going to press P to separate this by selection. And we're now going to use this to extrude this front part, which is protecting your eyes. So extrude X to extrude it along the X axis. And now the problem is that this is a little bit too flat when it should be a lot more curved. So to fix that, we're going to go back to the cap and enter edit mode. With Alt right click, we're going to select all this geometry down here. And let's rotate that around the Y axis like this. We can lower it down on the z-axis and push it forward on the x-axis maybe even scale it up a little bit on the x-axis then from side view i'm going to select this geometry from the back and i want to straighten that out a little bit and i'll bring this a little bit lower i'm just trying to rearrange this geometry so i have a better curve here this slope here is supposed to be higher because that way when we extrude this sideways the shield is going to be more curved so it's going to look better so now let's try selecting these edges from the front again and extruding them along the x-axis as you can see that looks a lot better now you can still select these faces and scale them up if you want to you just have to be careful not to mess up this geometry too much you don't want this band to be too uneven but something like this looks about right now in edge select mode i'll select this edge loop and with Control e i'll mark seam now in face select mode i can just use l to select the surface at the top that makes it very easy to adjust its position or rotation anytime i want to make the changes to the top of the hat i can easily just select this with l just make sure that you're in face select mode because this is not going to work the same way if you're in vertex select mode now we're going to take this geometry and separate it by selection with alt right click i'll select this vertex loop in the back here extrude x-axis i just want to bring it inwards a little bit like this maybe we can even and scale it down a little bit now extrude along the z-axis to bring it upwards and now we have this little corner in the back here so when we apply the subdivision surface modifier we're gonna have some supporting geometry and this is going to nicely connect with the inside of the hat so now we can also apply a subdivision surface modifier to the hat and right now i'm using a shortcut you can just do that in object mode with control one or control two or control three otherwise you have to go over here to modifier properties add modifier generate subdivision surface i don't feel like doing all that you can just do control one or control two or whatever and it's going to create a subdivision surface modifier for you now once we subdivided this shape here is sticking out of the hat so we're going to select these vertices scale them down on the y-axis a little bit just so they're on the inside that's a bit better let's also select these edge loops here press n to get this menu on the side go to item set the mean crease value to one and 
now we got a sharp edge here so that's a little bit better you can scale this up a little bit if you want to and with control r we're also going to add an extra loop up to the top here and i think we should also select all the geometry at the top and scale that up a little bit that gives us a better shape and now we can start adding some details to this hat Probably the most important detail that we have to add here is the hole in the back of the hat. So with Shift D, we're going to duplicate this. We're going to move it somewhere along the Y axis just so we have a backup here because now we're going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. And when we apply the subdivision surface modifier, we can't really go back. We're going to get a lot of geometry and we're going to start making some changes. And if we fuck something up at some point, we're not going to be able to get the old simple model back. That's why I just create a backup like this. Now I can apply this with Control A and now I have more geometry to work with here. Now I don't want to have too much geometry. so. With alt right click i'll select this edge loop and dissolve it with x now i'll select these three edges go to select select loops edge rings and then we're going to go to w loop tool space that's going to make this a little bit more even i don't want to get rid of any of the edge loops at the top here but maybe i'll try to space them more evenly so maybe i'll select this edge loop over here go to select select loops edge rings now we can go to w loop tool space we can scale this one down a little bit to make it a bit softer but now the geometry is a little bit more evenly distributed so now we can start adding some details here in fact I am going to select a couple of edge loops like this, dissolve edges, and with my loop tools, I'll space them all out again. Now these faces have a better shape. They look more like squares, which is better topology, and this is going to make it easier for us to work with this model. So now let's use our box select tool to select some geometry from the bottom here. Let's also select some faces up here. I to inset, B to remove the boundary at the bottom. We got to make sure that we also select these faces here. I think this goes a little bit too high, so I'm going to deselect this face loop. Now I'll inset, and now we can delete these faces. We just have to reshape this to make it more like a curve. So I'll select this edge segment, W loop tools, relax. I'll set the interpolation to linear, give me three iterations. That looks a lot better now. Maybe I'll take these edges around here and slide them up or down a little bit. I think this is not a bad shape. If you want to, you can place your cursor down here, then select this edge loop over here. You can use your 3D cursor as a pivot point. You can scale this with shift Y, and that way you can just lift it up a little bit more to get some more space here. But I think this is pretty good for me, obviously when you're making your hat you're gonna have a slightly different shape you might want to make the proportions a little bit different in different parts but this is how I want to do it. This is good enough for me. I'm just doing it for the tutorial. Now with control R, we're going to add a loop cut up here. Then in face select mode with alt right click, we'll select this. Alt E extrude faces along normals. We're going to push this outwards a little bit. Now in face select mode, we're going to deselect these loops. So we only have these little edges selected like this. Set the pivot point to individual origins. Scale this down a little bit. You can adjust the thickness with alt S like this. You can push this down further if you want to. This is going to be the little band that separates the top from the bottom. We're going to have some stitching around this. This is a very important detail. I'm we also have to have something similar around this hole and also to connect this here so let's select this edge loop here we're going to fill this with f just temporarily now we're going to press i to inset and o for outset and that's going to create a new edge loop around this hole then we can delete this face and the reason for this is that this face loop here is perfectly even on all parts we have a few too many edge loops here so let's get rid of these with x dissolve edges let's also slide this down just a little bit like this now take this alt e extrude faces along normals like this again you can deselect these and scale these edges down to make this a bit softer you can use alt s to inflate or deflate this don't worry this is going to have smooth shading so it's going to look a little bit better later on now let's select this edge segment p to separate this to new object extrude this to the side a little bit like this you also probably got to push it inwards a little bit then place your cursor right here set the pivot point to 3d cursor shift d right click sy minus one select everything m to merge by distance correct the normals and now you have a little band here so we're also going to do alt e extrude faces along normals that's going to give us this little connecting part here we should probably select this and lift it up into the other band so it's not visible also going to lower this down into this now you want to delete the faces at the top and the bottom and also the faces in the back like this so x delete faces now we just have this little part wrapped around here let's correct the normals let's also select the cap here we should probably add another loop cut here to tighten up this corner a little bit and maybe just for good measure let's take all this geometry in the back here and let's move it backwards a little bit so it's not clipping through the side here let's also duplicate this and bring it over to the side in case we mess something up apply the subdivision surface modifier you can get rid of some of the extra edge loops around here because you don't need this many then we're going to do alt e extrude faces along normals that's going to give us a little bit of thickness like this i think that's pretty good for this cap we don't need this many edge loops here so we're going to dissolve those this is especially important if you're trying to optimize this for a game you don't want to have too many polygons you want to remove all the edges you can remove the less edges you have the better but you still don't want to make this look blocky you don't want to make it look like shit you want to make it look nice and smooth so we're going to dissolve as much as we can without drastically changing the shape of the object that means that we can also select some edge loops up here at the top we can press x and dissolve edges here this
this doesn't really change the shape too much we can probably replace this here with an end gone or at least some triangles so let's just delete all this scale this down a little bit further then e to extrude right click and scale to zero merge by distance and that saves us a bunch of polygons so that's going to be a little bit better before we continue let's also select these edges here and these three on this side p to separate them by selection in edit mode you're going to go to edge select mode and press w bridge edge loops that's going to connect them so now you can add a couple of loop cuts from side view we're going to push that outwards a little bit to get the right curve in the back here then we're going to deselect the size and push this one out a little bit more as you can see now this pretty much continues this curve here around the band extrude right click and use alt s to deflate this a little bit so we add some thickness here you can delete the faces on the sides here you can even delete the faces in the back because they're not going to be visible again if you're optimizing for a game you want as few polygons as possible but now that we added some of the important details here let's quickly go over the shading and then we're going to start adding the wrinkles which are the most important part of this tutorial we're going to select all these objects here go up here to object click on shade smooth and now you got smooth shading but we still got to tighten up the shading on some corners because not every corner is supposed to have smooth shading so with control r we're going to add a loop cut here as you can see that tightens up this corner over here doesn't make it look as smooth we're also going to do the same thing down here at the bottom you have to be careful with this type of stuff because this can significantly add to your polygon count so if you're going really low pole you don't want to do this instead you're going to want to select these edge loops control e mark sharp and now you're going to go to object shade auto smooth and crank that all the way up. Now this is going to be completely sharp, but I don't think that looks very good. I can afford to add a couple more polygons here. So I'll just use loop cuts to tighten this up. And I think that looks a lot better. We're going to take this and extrude right click scale down a little bit. That's going to give us a little bit of thickness around this edge at the bottom here. But when we do that, we also got to add a loop cut like this. I think we should probably separate this with V here because this is probably supposed to be a completely sharp edge. Or instead of separating it, we can just press Control E mark sharp object shade auto smooth crank it up. Now I think this is going to work a lot better. It looks like the shading is kind of weird and something is off about this object It's probably because of normals. So let's check the normals. We're going to go up here to viewport overlays, check face orientation. If it's red, it means you got a problem. It means your normals are inverted. So we're going to select everything with A in edit mode. Shift N to recalculate normals. If you have to, you got to check inside here. Just make sure that everything is blue. Once everything is blue, go back to viewport overlays, uncheck face orientation. And now you're good to go. Let's also add a loop cut here and down here. And we got to figure out a way to tighten up these corners. So we're going to use alt right click to select one of these sharp edges. Then press shift G, select similar face angles. Make sure you didn't miss any. So also select these over here. Then press control B to bevel. Scroll up once. Click to confirm and set the shape value to one. You're also going to uncheck loop slide. Now you have better shading on the edges of this part in the front here. And now the shading is more or less taken care of. And we're going to get to the most important part here. I'm going to show you how to add wrinkles. This is very important for any clothing object that you're ever going to make. You might find this a little bit difficult to absorb. But if you pay close attention and if you repeat the parts that confuse you, and if you ask the right questions and if you join my discord and you talk to the community, you're going to be able to follow. You're going to be fine. This is really important. So buckle up. First, let's switch over to the shading workspace. I'm going to right click over here and join these two areas. And then I'll switch this to UV editor so I can have my UV editing right here. Let's add a new material. We're going to name this UV test. With shift A, we're going to add an image texture node. Click on new. We're going to generate a new UV grid. We're going to name this UV grid. Click OK and plug that into base color. And now we're going to have a temporary texture on an object so we can UV unwrap this properly. We're also going to select everything and join it into the same object for now. We can clear all the seams that we had from before for selection purposes. And first, we're going to add a new seam around the base here. So select this edge loop between the body of the cap and this band down here Control e mark seam we're going to do the same thing up here at the top and we're going to make sure that we mark a seam on both sides of this band up here like this and let's also mark seams around these edges around the front of the cap like this Control e mark seam i think this should be more or less okay so let's try it out we're going to select everything and press u unwrap immediately you can see how the texture is projected on this object everything is good except this part around here so we're going to add another seam underneath this band right here we're going to select this edge loop down here we got to make sure not to select anything outside of this so deselect all this, but leave this stuff down here selected. Go control E, mark seam, unwrap everything again. And now this is a lot better. We have some weird loops here in the UV map. So let's get rid of those really quickly. I'm going to select these faces on the inside of this cap right here. Those are not going to be visible and I don't want to have them on my UV map. So when I select them, I'll just press X, delete faces, then UV unwrap one more time. As you can see now, this turned into a straighter line. I no longer have to deal with a big loop covering a large part of my UV map. 
is just a little bit easier to work with. Now this seems like a very poorly UV unwrap model. As you can see, we have a lot of unused areas on our UV map. Half of the texture is not even used up and all these islands are concentrated onto small areas, which means the resolution is not as high as it could be. So we can try rearranging this manually, for example, by moving this thing out of the way. Then we can take these and bring them closer to the side. I'm gonna rotate them by 180 degrees. That way I have a little bit more space here. Then with L, I'm gonna select these two islands here, place them somewhere in a little corner where they have enough space. With L, I'll so like this island this is the band that goes around the top i'll move that with g and place it around this top surface i'll also scale it up a little bit so they're not overlapping and now i can select both of these and scale them up a little bit they're still gonna fit in here somewhere so that's fine if you want to you can drop these into some corner down here and now you can move this part up here as well as this one over here and you're probably gonna be able to scale these up a little bit if you use individual origins that way you can have a little bit more texture on these surfaces but it doesn't make too much of a difference it doesn't matter that much you can optimize this further if you want to i don't feel like spending no more time with this you understand how this works now let's talk about how we're gonna add the wrinkles now we really only have to add wrinkles around the top here and maybe some around the bottom of this cap but this band is not gonna have any wrinkles so we're gonna select this surface at the top here and this surface that goes around the hat we're gonna UV unwrap them again so they have their own separate UV map this is not gonna work because we have way too much unused space here so probably a better solution in this case would be to select these seams up here around the top Control E clear seam now we can select this surface all together at the same time U unwrap and now it's all part of the same object. I know the UV mapping here is not perfect, but it doesn't matter. This is just for the wrinkles. When we have wrinkles, this is not gonna make any bends like this visible. This is going to make it a lot easier to create the wrinkles and make them look natural. When we're adding textures later on, we're gonna figure out a different way to map them, so don't worry. Now in the UV editor, we're gonna go up here to this little menu, go to UV, click on export UV layout, and now just find a folder somewhere on your computer where you wanna save this. I'm gonna name this hat UV map. Save that with enter. And now let's press seven on the number pad to go to top view. With shift A, we're gonna add a new image, reference find the image which you just saved and open it up now you have your uv map as an image in your workspace and we're going to use this as a reference to make the wrinkles so here's how we're going to make the wrinkles with shift s i'll snap the 3d cursor to this plane right here and with shift a i'm going to add a new circle let's give this circle 16 vertices let's scale it up extrude right click and scale down to zero m to merge vertices by distance and we're going to reshape this circle so it has more or less exactly the same shape as this reference image it's probably better if we don't have this middle part yet so let's just delete this vertex and I'll give me some subdivision surface. We're going to align these vertices here with the reference image. It doesn't have to be completely exact, but the closer you can get, the better. And once this circle aligns with the reference image, more or less, we're going to extrude this geometry and scale it down towards the middle. Now we have to align this inner edge loop here with this circle that you can see. This is the band that goes around the top of the hat. So we got to adjust the scale a little bit. Again, we got to move individual vertices around. And once again, this doesn't have to be completely perfect. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer you can get to the the middle of this band here the better off you're going to be the more accurately placed your wrinkles are going to be when you start adding them so just take your time in aligning these vertices i think this is going to work pretty well extrude right click scale this down even further and then finally extrude right click scale down to zero maybe that's not a good idea just yet probably we better apply the subdivision surface modifier and then once we have enough geometry, now we can extrude this towards the middle. Because if you have a middle which is triangulated like this, and if you apply the subdivision surface modifier, you're going to have some weird shit start to happen. Here's an example of what happens when you apply the subdivision surface modifier. Blender is trying to keep all quads, so it gives you some weird shit like this. I don't want that. So I'd rather just leave a little hole in here in the middle for now. It's not going to be a problem. It's not going to get in the way of anything. We're going to subdivide this even further because we need to have a lot of geometry here. This is still not enough. Let's add another two levels apply this make sure to save your file in this case because you might get too much geometry your computer might crash don't worry we're not going to have this many vertices in the final object we're going to delete this later this is just for creating the wrinkles which you're going to bake as a normal map so once you got a whole bunch of vertices like this we're going to select an edge loop which is right around this band here in the reference image Control e mark seam this is just going to be a little mark which was going to tell us where the band is located and this is how we're going to know where is the border between the side of the hat and the middle of the hat when we don't have the reference image so let's go object shade smooth and with Control tab you're gonna go to sculpt mode alternatively you can switch to sculpt mode over here in this top left menu and now you just gotta start adding the wrinkles now I fucked up because when you're sculpting you can't see this red edge over here so let's go to edit mode and select this red edge loop we're gonna press P to separate this by selection and now we're gonna lift this up a little bit and this is gonna stay when we're sculpting the object below so we're gonna be able to see where this border is supposed to be placed it might be a good idea to go to viewport shading up here and switch to a matte cap this is gonna make any wrinkles more visible when you start adding them with your sculpting tools I'm I'm gonna go with this semi shiny one over here. I think that's pretty good. 
and now we're going to start adding the wrinkles so here's how you add the wrinkles you're going to switch to minus over here you're going to reduce the strength on your tool and you can adjust the radius if you want to just keep in mind that when you zoom out your brush gets relatively bigger the brush size is proportional to your screen because you're choosing how many pixels it's covering so if you zoom in this brush becomes a lot smaller in comparison to the object below adding the wrinkles is very easy but be careful about the strength if you adjust the strength even a little bit it can make a big difference for the intensity of the brush i'm going to go with something like 0.18 and now you just have to make a stroke around this line here try to move your mouse around a little bit to make it messy but don't go over one spot too many times because it's going to get a little bit too deep so you're going to do one stroke like this and then mess around the middle to make it a little bit deeper around the middle and you want to take your time with this you want to add as many wrinkles as possible all the way around this little perimeter here you don't have to be an expert sculptor to do this obviously the more time you invest here the better it's going to look in the end but you don't have to worry about this too much just add a bunch of dips around this border like this try to make them look natural try to give them all a slightly different length and size and depth you can take some parts and make an extra deep wrinkle you can make it go further down to the bottom here you can also make it go further in towards the middle this is going to create some type of a fold in the hat which is also quite natural when you have a clothing object so just keep adding wrinkles and if you mess something up here's what you can do you can press t to open this menu on the side find this tool called smooth you can also activate it by pressing s increase your brush size a little bit and now you just have to apply this over a certain area and it's going to make the dimple disappear it's going to become smooth again it might be a good idea to do this around the outside that way the bottom part is going to look a little bit smoother and more natural you won't have any sharp corners here then just go back to your draw tool here at the top go back to minus reduce your radius to whatever it's got to be and just keep adding more wrinkles around this perimeter you can make them larger you can zoom in to make them smaller if you want to just play around with this a little bit it ain't rocket science take your time with this because if you're rushing with this it's not going to look good i would recommend that you make some smooth dents like this first which are relatively large and relatively soft and after you created those then zoom in a little bit reduce the radius and then add a couple more lines all over the place just to make it look a little bit more natural and a little bit more detailed again you got to figure out what type of pattern looks best i'm just rushing through this just to show you how this is going to work and how to do this properly you're going to obviously have to spend a little bit more time with this than me you don't have to spend that much time in 10 minutes you can make some very nice wrinkles it ain't rocket science you don't got to spend all day sculpting this shit as you can see i already got a whole bunch of wrinkles i'm gonna add a few more shapes over here because i don't like how this looks too much i'm gonna go to my smooth tool because i think i made this part a little bit too deep and then with my draw tool i'm also gonna add some wrinkles around the bottom over here you can just do this in one stroke just keep moving your mouse around the sides outside here doesn't have to have that many wrinkles you just want to put a few here and there and you just want to slightly mess up the sides so they don't look too smooth and too unnatural but i think something like this is good for now you can make some more adjustments later but let me show you how to fit this onto your object now now i noticed that this whole time my normals were inverted which means that when i was sculpting my brush was in minus mode and it's supposed to go down but since the normals are inverted it created bumps instead so i gotta select this and go to edit mode select everything press s z minus one this is gonna invert this object and now instead of bumps i have holes here so now i'll select everything and press shift n this doesn't work automatically so i gotta check this inside box right here now everything is blue so now everything is fine we're gonna uncheck this and here's a quick preview of how i busted up this surface of course you can make some changes you can probably make this look a little bit better i'm not trying to spend all day creating these wrinkles again i'm just doing this shit for the tutorial so now you're going to place your 3d cursor onto this image below and with shift a you're going to add a new plane in edit mode you're going to scale this plane by 2.5 and that's going to make it exactly the same size as this reference image and you're going to place that just above this surface which we were just sculpting on like this now on this plane you're going to add a new material in that new material you're going to go to shift a new image texture node generate a new image you're going to name this wrinkles and you're going to set the dimensions to 4096 by 4096 the generated type has to be blank check 32-bit float click ok set the color space to non-color now select the sculpted surface shift select the plane select this node right here go to your render properties and switch the render render to cycles scroll down here to the bake menu and here you're going to bake this surface into normal map onto the plane here so you're going to set the bake type to normal you're going to check selected to active you're going to go up here and reduce this render samples to one and you can open up this wrinkles image over here so you can see what it looks like when it bakes now you just have to click bake sit back and relax contemplate your life for a second one day when you're old you're going to be remembering these beautiful days when you were young and you're going to wish you spend more time on instagram scrolling through reels or browsing tiktoks instead of going outside and enjoying your life so just keep that in mind open up instagram and go swipe reels right now and once your normal map is baked you're looking at it right here on the left side if you want a preview you can go to material preview over here with shift there you're going to add a normal map node 
plug this wrinkle shit into the normal map node, then plug the normal map into the principled node, and you probably gotta add some color to make this more visible. But you can see now that you have some wrinkles on this surface, even though it's just a perfectly flat, simple surface, it's just a plane. There's no geometry on this surface, so this is how you add details while keeping low poly. So we're gonna go back to this hat over here. With Shift A, we're gonna add a new image texture node. On the side here, you're gonna open up the wrinkles image. Again, add a normal map node, plug the color into color and the normal into normal. Now you only want this to be on the top part of your hat here, so you probably might want to add a new material and assign that new material to these parts where you don't want to have the wrinkles. So with L, we're going to select this surface up here. Then with Control I, we're going to invert selection. Now in the material properties, you're going to add a new material and assign it there. Just for the hell of it, let's make this black for now. And this UV test material, we're going to unplug the UV grid image. Now you can see your wrinkles. You can give this some color or turn it darker so you can see it better. You're probably going to have to increase the roughness. But this is how you add wrinkles to your object. This is how you make clothing in Blender. If you want to make this even better, you can select a couple of segments around the top of this hat and move them inwards. You want to make this hat look a little bit more busted up on different parts. You don't want this to be perfectly round and smooth. So just go around this hat and just move the geometry around a little bit here and there. This is going to make a huge difference in making your object look a lot more realistic. This is going to be especially important if you have some deep wrinkles on certain parts of the hat. For example, right here, we have to take the geometry and move it inwards a little bit like this. It just makes more sense that this is also going to bend if there's a wrinkle. Now, I think this is already a lot of information for one tutorial. We still got to add some textures here and we still got to add some stitches. That's going to be a whole different story, but it's going to be too much if I do it in one tutorial. So if you guys want to see part two, we're going to add some textures and some stitches then let me know in the comments below we're gonna create another tutorial for that and make sure to join my discord community we got four and a half thousand people in there if you ever need any help you can always just ask the community if you want to stay up to date with what's happening in my channel that's where you're going to receive notifications so make sure to join that using the link below if this tutorial was fast for you check out the fucking ebook let me know in the comments what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one